Good afternoon, everyone. It is the 23rd of February. This is the second meeting of the Township Trustees, Miami Township Trustees, February. Welcome. Uh, first order of business, I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of February 7th of 22. I so move. Move by second. There's a motion and a second. Are there any revisions? Deletions, corrections to the minutes. There's one little typo that I found which will be entered into the official record. Oops. Where is it? I got two, I see now I've got two colons in the uh, road and bridge and see that's not capitalized. And anyway. Well, under public comment, Joe Krejcik, uh second sentence. He added, he's not against solar oh. power, and it's more about the location. That's, that was mine. That's, that's true. Okay, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, we'll give Chris yeah, credit for that. Put <laughs> that <laughs> under my <laughs> corrections sure. list. Yeah, I'll give you a credit. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Uh, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. All right, now I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $50,980. Broke down general fund $9,311.45. Fire fund $32,000. There's an extra one in there. Yeah, there sure is. $32,112.48. Yeah. Cemetery $299.15. EMS billing $6,292.13, Rodenbridge $5,964.79, and that's it. Do I hear a motion? Yes, I move. We all all second. 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 Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, uh, vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Correspondence this period. We're looking at uh, save the date, spring cleaning from the Family Violence Prevention Center, OTA's legislative alert, UAN reminder notice for the end of the year, recommendation for the Ohio Power Siding Board on Kingwood Pro Solar Project. I'm sure that'll come up. Uh, Green County bro uh, Broadband Information and Jurisdictional Participation, and that will come up. RPCC, Executive Committee Meeting Announcements, uh, RPCC regular meeting announcements, email to our karma, to or to. Otarma regarding changes in the deductibles. Uh, that'll probably come up. ODOT safety sign guidance program won't come up. Workers count queue up reminder. Support letter for Kingswood uh, project uh, will come up. Uh, Green County Public Health District submission fees. Uh, changes in the details from the Red Book. The ARPA final world webinar recording. Questions regarding the levies and taxes from Monitor Graham. That'll come up. Green County Engineers Annual Township Meeting on March 8th. Uh, probably will come up. MVRPC designation forms, which we do have to do. I don't know where those went, though. They're still there in the file. Are they there? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I saw them. I know. Okay. I can go on my picture on the phone with that. All right. Thank you. Fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status. For today. Yes, sir. I do not have a copy of the agenda. Oh. Is that in mine? Yeah, I'll get it. I got one. Here. Well, I want to get MVRPC forms, too. I don't want to take away. No, I have. I made one for Lisa, for Jennifer, and she's going to. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm going to get some reading glasses. Um. Can we mention agenda items? You certainly can. Uh, I'd like to bring up a shared hosting of. Green County Town Association. Okay. I mean, I can make new business. Yes, you say why don't you do that? Just new business? Yeah. That'll make it exciting. Now I've got two copies. Okay, let's move along. Uh, are there any public comments on the agenda items, items this evening? Any members of the public? With us this afternoon, who'd like to make a comment? 
I'm just thrilled that you guys found uh, like two point seven million dollars in the fire fund there. So congratulations. What can I say? Can we, do we want to uh, have Mayor Gary talk now? Or? Well, I was going to save the best for a while, but no, it's all right. I'll, I'll no, 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 you get, Mayor, carry on. I don't want to disrupt your flow. If, you, if you'd like to use the podium, or if you'd like to just. No, I'd rather not. I'd <laughs> like to pass out this memo, though, if you all didn't receive it. I received it. You guys received that? Yes, I have a hard copy. I have a hard copy. Margaret? I haven't seen it. A hard copy for you. Thank you. Here is one for you, Dan. Is it in correspondence? He says. So, yeah, the presentation that I'm here to make is um, mostly right here in this memo. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, but a long story short, we have pretty bad leak in the firehouse roof in Milton Clifton. Um, that firehouse is property of the village of Clifton, um, but it is operated and has been for many years, decades in fact, I think, by uh, Miami Township Fire Rescue. Um, the terms of that lease are set up in such a way as to be rent-free, and the spirit of that is, is collaboration. Um, it's been a great working relationship all these years, all the years that I've served. And I think um, Chief Altman would attest to that uh, spirit of collaboration as well. To, to give you an example, um, we, had, we had a cement curtain that's used for parking out front. And that is used by the village and it's used by um, Miami Township, and it's used by the seniors at the Senior Center. There's an old Google Maps photo, as you can see how that was all cracked up. A few years ago, um, a few, keep going, September of 2017 was when that was, that we had that report. Um, oh, that was done by Gray's Earthworks. No. Pass this invoice around if you'd like to see it. Um, that was a local contractor. Um, we did that work and the totals were split between the seniors, the village, and the township. Uh, it was $2,900 each uh, for a total of $8,700 on that project. So that's just an example in the recent past, at least in my memory and some of yours, of um, some, some financial collaborative uh, work that we all uh, put in to make something happen and and it, it was a success there's there's a catch basin and a drain under there too so it was uh, somewhat complicated back to the issue at hand the timeline is in the memo here and i have some documents that i pulled up in 2018 there was a storm that caused a great big branch from a dead elm tree come down on the roof in such a way that it actually punctured the roof and the structure. Um, I found the minutes of a Clifton meeting uh, that states the following. The roof of the fire station was damaged during the storm. Miami Township will pay for the repairs. The tree that caused the damage needs to be removed. So Ariana moved to appropriate $1,600 for this. Those were second the motion. All members voted aye. So, uh, that is looks to me like, um, and, and this was also, I checked with Chief Altman, this is also how he recalled, Township paid to patch the roof, to patch the, the punctured area where, where the roof was leaking. Um, the village paid to cut down that tree. Again, in the spirit of collaboration, we worked together, we, we saved the day, we got the job done. Um, unfortunately, the roof patch failed, um, and there was further leaking that occurred um, the damage is now quite extensive. And I mentioned in the memo here that unfortunately due to the pandemic, um, this beautiful building you know, shifted some of the focus from uh, the fire rescue crew. And so some of that uh, future leaking went, went unnoticed for quite some time. Um, so we, uh, 
consulted, the village consulted with some contractors and we looked at the extent of the damage and one option was to replace the entire roof. Um, you know, complete tear off, uh, start over. And we were looking at $45,000, which was quite a bit of money. So um, we had it reassessed. Uh, we looked at what we could do to address the structural damage now, because it's not just the surfacing of the roof, but it's into the, when you talk about a tear off, uh, you know, we're removing shingles and now we're replacing sheets of plywood, or OSB in this case. Um, so we determined that we can replace about six sheets of OSB, that will be the insulated ISO board uh, type, and then there will be um, a fitted piece of rubber, Firestone rubber um, in commercial grade. It'll be put over top of that. It'll be lapped into the good rubber that's there. It'll be seam sealed with uh, a patch that's made from silicone. It's also a Firestone brand product. And then there will be two coats of silicone over the entire roof. So it is, um, it is the opinion of a ZCI, the contractor, for whom we've attached the estimate and all of us who assessed it, that this will restore the roof to its full structural integrity. Um, and it seems though we've, we've, we've gone down the patching route and painting of elastomeric paints and other things. This silicone, uh, especially when it's, when it's applied professionally in the, the two full coats, creates a membrane um, that's impenetrable to water, but it's also UV stable, um, and this will hold a guarantee of 15 years. So the, the roof will be guaranteed for 15 years after this work is completed, um, which is another peace of mind for uh, those of us that you know aren't in the building every day, and it's <clears throat> and it needs uh, needs to be protected. Um, I don't think I've left anything out. But if I have, uh, you know, the, the memo again is fairly detailed. Before we get into the numbers, I'll direct you to some of the photos of the current uh, leak. If you go back to page, I don't know, the third or fourth page down, the fifth page, you get into some of the leak on the inside. This is how it's, this is how it's looking currently. Um, so you can see the, the drop ceiling panels there, you know, crumbled away. The insulation has quite a bit of mold, but we looked at the structural members, and you know, this is this is you know old growth pine. Um, it's that the structural integrity is there, but the the OSB is definitely mushy. The insulation will have to go. The insulation uh, will we'll probably have to go. Yeah, uh, some of it will. We're not particularly worried about. Mold once the once the uh, once the, the patch holes once the leak is stopped that type of you know that cavity if it's dry then it'll tend to bake out um, you know any of that moisture but yeah any of the drywall stuff that that's all going to be need to be looked at um, and then if you look at the final two photos uh, figures eleven and twelve that's the actual roof and in these photos it it doesn't look to be in terrible condition. Um, but in figure 12, uh, that, that corner is the issue in question that was patched. Um, and when, when you go out and, and walk on it, there's some fairly mushy spots. So that's, that's the part that's indicative of the rotten wood, and that's where the structural work comes into play. That's the back corner. Yeah. Heat tells us. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that little pile of scrap you can see in the photos. Yeah. One, one of Pete's. One of these many piles of scrap. Um, okay, so back to the, not to take up too much of your time, but I, I do want to be thorough, so we're all on the same page here. Back to the, the, the first sheet of this memo. Um, the new estimate is $25,571.62. It covers the work that I outlined. Um, ZCI, general contracting. Um, as included the estimate here, and the materials manufactured by Firestone Building Products out of Nashville, Tennessee. My cost plan proposal is to split that 50-50 with 
Miami Township Fire Rescue. The village of Clifton has paid $12,800 as a 50% deposit. Um, it's really important that we get this work on the calendar um, and not kick the can down the road. They need at least 35 degrees and rising to get two coats of that silicone and a stretch of dry days because they're going to be cutting this thing open and tearing off material. Sure. So, you know, the way the weather patterns are, are going, that, you know, that could be late March. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, and we could be in, you know, we're getting into the monsoon season as soon as we get out of the fall. So, with that in mind, um, time is of the essence. So, we've, we've already made the picture present down, so I'm here to appeal to you today um, for your financial support um, to cover this. And I, and I do believe that it is, as I said, in keeping uh, with the um, with the, the lease agreement, the spirit of that agreement, and uh, the working relationship that we have with Miami Township Fire Rescue. So that's my entire presentation with that. I'll answer any questions that you guys might have so that we can discuss. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move that we uh, uh, share the cost with the Village of Clifton for this roof replacement. A second? I'll second. Any discussion regarding that? Well, why don't we be specific? It's uh, going to be 12800 and something. Mm -hmm. You want to just say a specific number sure. or up to 13000 uh, uh, so I'm asking for 12800 specifically. Now, if you guys want to put a margin of safety on that, in case we get in there and costs go up a tiny bit, the estimate supposedly holds once we've signed the builder's agreement, but um, I'm happy with 12800 if you're happy, I'm happy. How about you? So is that the wording? Yep. The wording right motion includes that amount of money. I got it. And Margaret, you and Sue could work out the um, best way to go about this, but Sue, our clerk credit Clifton, recommended that the contractor just bill, bill your hat directly to the township. Does that sound copacetic for you? Sure. Otherwise, we pay the whole thing, and then we bill, and then you bill back. Yeah, actually, she thought the auditor would be happier that way. Yeah, that's fine. I'm ha I, I want to keep auditors happy. I'm mm -hmm. keeping my here. Looks like, yeah, um, the 12 8 is just a titch over half, but who cares? So. Yeah, so if the balance comes in. At It'll be a little bit less, but that's we'll that 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 that. <laughs> yeah. um, It looks like that's what we did with that other proposal, that, that uh, concrete work was created. Construction, that's why I thought that, that might work. What you mean? Any further discussion? Um. Is that a, a no? That was a not, oh, okay. no, no, further, no further discussion. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to reading lips and it's so difficult. Um, may we vote please? Uh, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Alex, I apologize that the chief is uh, taken away from us this evening. So, regarding the second half of a potential, that's really outside the purview of the board. So, it's a conversation. I think you either just need to continue with him or. Yes. Uh, it, and that kind of brings me up, and this is, it's not sour grapes. I'm not trying to be, you know, a downer or anything, but. Uh, the, the fire department is in such dire financial need at the moment. Uh, I hope the building is going to hold up for a, a little while because we are just not in a position to, to put any money into it. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, th these funds are not coming from fire funds. These are coming right out of general fund because the fire fund has no extra money for this kind of repair. So. Uh, if there's, and I haven't been in there for a while, and, and I can walk in there and I can see a zillion of things that it, that it needs to have done. Sure. Um, I certainly uh, uh, applaud this concept of the, of the training, and I hope that goes through, and I, and I hope we have grants of plenty, but out of pocket, it's just not going to happen a whole lot in the next, in the next few years. So until we, until we get our um, levy situation straight, but, the amount of money that we need for operating expenses. I understand. No, that, that'll, 
you know, I hear that loud and clear. Yeah. Um, and we're in the same same situation. Sure. We see really struggling with Cliff and we um, we pour enough money into the buildings just to you know keep the lights on. Yeah. Let alone when you're talking about um, you know, major upgrades that are needed. Um, with that said, I I did have a uh, conversation um, about several uh, of my pet projects, and this is one of the items that I brought up with uh, Rick Corrales, mm -hmm. who doesn't speak for for all three county commissioners, but for his part, um, he said, I said, you, would there be county funding for that type of thing, given that it's not just the village of Clifton, but it's two other county entities, being Miami Township and Cedarville Township. And Cedarville Township and Miami Township already having collaborated to some extent to do training, and some of it in Clifton, which is a natural meeting point for them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Corrales' comment was, yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a slam dunk because um, you know it's it's so broad in nature, and these are you know, fire, 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 and rescue. These guys are saving lives, so this you know would, would not be controversial um, in his opinion at county level. Now, again, that's you know that's him speaking candidly. That's not him county means you know going, going through uh, your council to find you come. I'm not sure what funds have come from or how they would be um, applied for. But I would, um, with your blessing, like to pursue it with Chief Miller and Chief Altman, and then maybe talk to Eric Henry um, at Green County and see what type of outside funding there would be. And I think there's there's two areas uh, where where money would need to be spent. One is in equipment that's used in fire training. Uh, there's one in in the memo. There's a photo in here that has some of that. Have, have you seen the fire force door in here is something that you know, these cost about ten thousand dollars I think at the commercial level. So some of that equipment um, would not be property of the village of Clifton and would not have anything to do with upgrades to the building. So you know that and that perhaps that's an entirely separate discussion. Again, I don't know this is up to Chiefs Miller and Altman to decide what, what the needs are. But then the upgrades to the building would come into play where to house that equipment, you know, what, what needs to be in place, does, do things need to be retrofitted, um, and some of it is just, you know, things just need to be, it just needs to be upkeep. Um, and then finally, you know, one of the components that everybody loved was that we have a couple of historic items in there, and it's something of a tradition in older firehouses to have the glass overhead doors in a museum-like fashion displaying some of the antique trucks that are out of commission. We have this fine piece of equipment over there. Um, and, we, and we also have the 1941 Dodge uh, Antioch Fire Department truck over there. Yep. So those types of things, you know, I don't know that you have the, the space here or the interest in displaying those, but those would be fantastic um, if they were displayed in Clifton. Now, that's the type of thing that you know, nobody has money for, but um, as you're getting into um, you know, sources of funding that um, require not only back, you know, behind the scenes training, but also something that's that's uh, you know, interesting and pretty for the public to engage with. That type of thing exists as well. So it kind of runs the gamut, I think. Um, and I understand that there wouldn't be money coming directly from the, the coffers of the township for this, but I think there might be outside funding. Uh, that we can tap into. That's all I'll say on that, but it's something that I'm excited about because it's, you know, a significant revitalization sure. to that building, but it also <coughs> continues the productive work that the firemen and, and the rescue crew have done in Clifton all these years. And we're all worried with uh, the construction of Station 81 that some of that would go away and we were considering you know, what are, what are the other options to repurpose in that building, tearing it down and starting over? And uh, I can't speak for any of you, but you know, I can't speak for Chief Altman, but his intention all along with me was, no, no, our, our intention is to use that um, in, some, in some way, shape, or form. And we think it's definitely the highest and best use for the firehouse would be a joint training uh, center. This is, this is Colin's um, spiel for the trustees. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and here's his. Yeah. So anyway. Well, I, I think his, his 
off a floor plan, this concept plan of what might be put in the buildings. Right, and so he's not here tonight, so I won't take up any more of your time. I'll just leave it at that. But just since I'm here, I just wanted to, to say that um, I agree with you, Chris, and I share your, your sentiment. Well, my, um, uh, my eyes went to the line somewhere in there about removing you know, removing three bay doors and replacing them with picture windows or something. Right. And I started to see cash, one of those little cash signs in my head, and I thought, okay. Yep. So, keep, in, keep, in, keep in mind, Alex, and, and everyone, that we are um, about a week away from beginning to transition uh, in, in this department uh, into a new fire chief. And right. as such, we have no idea the level of commitment a new fire chief would have for a project like this. Uh, sure. And it, it probably would not be a, 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 a fatal blow to a, a, a prospective candidate if, if the candidate wasn't 100% on board with everything that Collins got you know, in, the, in the works now. So we just don't know what's going to happen uh, in, in, the, in the near future. So keep that in mind. Absolutely. Don't, don't misunderstand the, the the roof project is entirely separate, and that will be that will be done as soon as we get it. You know, you'll get a check as soon as we get a, a an invoice for it. So, excellent. Thank you, and thanks for this, Margaret. I didn't realize I didn't receive this before the meeting. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't realize that Colin had keyed this all up. But yeah, that was. I'm so I'm surprised he didn't. You, know, you may have it. It might now. be sitting in my inbox. It now. might be. Yeah. Well, it's new. I think he did this a couple of days ago. Okay. He's not even been here all day today. So. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I have seen this because, as he mentioned here, that he did present this to the village council yeah. in January. Yeah. Um, and I will also say that um, there is a full-time member of the uh, fire rescue squad that's living in Clifton now, uh -huh. yeah. which is, which is yeah. something that I'm happy it's to nice. Yeah, ever since Steve retired, we kind of had yeah. representation there, and it's nice that we do. Well, anyway, thank you very much for your time, everybody. You're welcome. I appreciate the support. You're not glued to the seat. We don't. Okay. 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 Thank you so much for coming, Alex. Not that way. Yeah, you want to go? Well, but your vehicle's back this way, right? <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, I'm parked over here in the yeah. regular lot. Yeah, that'll take this to the front. So there you go. Okay, moving to the fire report. Uh, we have one from uh, missing office or missing chief Altman, and it reads, "He will be absent this evening due to a scheduling conflict." We found that out. Uh, secondly, we have a new lieutenant, Chris Clyde, uh, started work uh, with light duty because of his medical condition last Wednesday. Working weekdays nine to five, getting up to speed with equipment procedures and operation. He's clear for full duty February 28th. Uh, his standing uh, his next standing operating procedures, he says, following the lengthy review period, all sections and chapter of our SOPs, what they call them, manual has been updated, which I didn't know they were doing, but I applaud them for doing that, especially uh, on his way out. Uh, next time, the stair climb has been scheduled for Saturday, September 10th at the ED Arena. Uh, hopefully, it will be as. Uh, <coughs> popular as it was last year, it was much interesting from last year. Anything else uh, in or out for the fire department? Marilyn? No. Don? No? Okay. Um, you said we're a week away from the transition to the fire chief. Well, we're a week away from beginning the transition to the fire chief. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that specific date. I had uh, talked to him a couple weeks ago. I just through March 1st into the 
calendar uh, transition. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, for a couple of years, Colin has said, I'm leaving soon, I'm leaving soon. Um, he's leaving soon. <laughs> so I talked to him, like, I think I sat down with him today a week ago, and he said he's looking at July 23. Uh-huh. Well, that's specific. That's our date. But you can see a long well, transition. There is the potential of a long transition, okay. yes. And we, we have to keep that in mind. Yeah. In July. He said 23. I was 2023. Yeah. yeah. 23rd of July. No, July. Well, actually, that's a good question. I was going to, I was going to check back with him because he said July 23. I thought, wow, that's a year off that I thought it would be. He but say, he, he might have meant July 23rd. So. Did he say that he decided to stay an extra year? That was last year. And that was for the this for the very well. I thought he was staying until 23. Well, we'll find out. But, for sure. Uh, Transition anyway in the near future. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we are, I am going to suggest an executive session at the end of our meeting tonight to review the progress that we are making towards a, a new fire chief this year. So it, it, it is this year. Okay. So we are, you're suggesting an executive session at the end of this meeting? Yes, sir. Can you wait? I can wait. Okay. All right, moving right along, we have the ever-famous, popular, and suspenseful cemetery and road report, which we had asked years ago to go ahead and break back up from cemetery to road on the agenda because it was confusing. Totally, but we'll, we'll move along. Sexton, Coconut? Yes, sir. Since the last meeting, we've had one burial in good force. We're going to have another one Friday, possibly Saturday, and that's possible. I'm not sure yet. She's still hanging on. And then we'll have an ashes on the 18th. I already had that stick. Uh, your sticks and stuff are picked up, but I cannot find uh, Karina Day. One of the filmers. Okay. That should be easy enough to rectify. I looked in the book, I didn't find it anywhere. I, I can't tell from I didn't picture. hear what you said. You cannot find it. Uh, Karina Davis. Uh, a particular name. Yeah. I saw your picture and tried to look at the background, but I could. Okay. Uh, uh, pointing in the right direction, you didn't take care of it. The, the handwritten list didn't say anything, didn't give you any more hint. Okay. All right. Well, that's easy enough to rectify. Um, I've asked our, our cemetery department to uh, start making, you know, late winter, early spring uh, pickups, junk and treatments and things like that at the, at the cemetery. And while we're doing that, hopefully uh, they can straighten up some stones that are cockeyed, uh, either not level this way in the ground or not level this way in the ground. Uh, we can't do anything for monument repair uh, at the moment, but uh, we may want to consider that again to have grave rumors come. If they're still active, I don't think they're still in business. <laughs> there are plenty. There's others. others. Like that. Yeah. Uh, they were good. I you know, hope we didn't lose them. Yeah. What else you got? Oh, um, I think that's it. I'll probably cut the pipes tomorrow that we picked up today for your sign. So we have to do Install some more sign? Yeah. Do you have any trouble getting them back? Did they fall mm -hmm. off or anything? No, no, no. Put a little bit of strap them in. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I, know, I talked to Nick. You did? You found him? Yeah, I ran into him. And we're going to look around, but I told him what he's going to have to do with these fence. At first he was kind of, eh, I thought, that's really awkward. Yeah. So he agreed to it. So I, as soon as... I don't know what you're talking about. The, the critter guy uh, behind the, the old Scotsman place. Oh, okay. In the back of the natural, he has to move his fence and that is, I'm going to open his box. He, he, he has animals back there. Okay? Yeah, in, in our... In our... Yeah. Cemetery. Future cemetery. So hopefully, Future cemetery. Right. Hopefully one day I can... Move go up there and clear a pathway so they can do the fence and mm -hmm. they can get it down and get started sometime soon. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, 
Does he have any sheep back in there? I mean, is he yeah. increasing them or decreasing them? Yeah, about eight, eight or ten. Is that right? Yeah, about a hundred uh, yeah. well, They wander around. Yeah, the ducks aren't in that area, right? I mean, well, they're all over. They come right. up in our area. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Across the road. Just a moment. Okay. Just one moment. Uh, I did have a brief update from uh, Ben Near, our columbarian maker. Uh, he's uh, optimistic that the stone will be available in the relatively near future when it comes to ships out at sea and, and transporting them from the west coast. The relatively near future. I'm not sure when that is, but. It's better than, I don't know where they are. So, that's that. I don't know when we're going to get them, but we're hoping. Um, soon. Soon, yeah, yeah very soon. I wanted to mention, if you don't know, mind, sure. the near burial vault company when I'm moving. Oh, okay. So, we're dealing with bell or cable or whoever else they said in, but our main one used to be near. Mm -hmm. so we'll be having bell or cable a lot more now. Until something happens with years, I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I'll still open it up again. Mm -hmm. Just want to share that. Uh, have you finished or are you prepared, in the middle of preparing your maintenance bill for the cemetery? Yes, I am just about finished with that. <laughs> so I'm going to turn in. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move to the... Uh, less popular road report. Okay, I turned in the collective to the county for our roads to be done. Thank you. The numbers are ridiculously high. But her, her calculations, she added a buffer, she's changed her calculation thing, so I talked to her and our numbers are going to be less than they are here. She was at 93,000 on Brian Buckley for a two-inch overlay. Whoa. And I said, that's so we dropped it to an inch and a half and it'll be 75. Right in the ballpark we talked about. Inch and a half overlay. Right, 75. So I was close. And it could be a little less than that depending on the collective. Uh -huh. How the prices are. Our prices are up a little bit on the material. So she told me it's going to depend. It could be lower if they don't use as much material either. It's close. Can we get. I'd like to get a copy of well, I have them here, but these numbers are not the numbers we Well, I'm interested in this in the roads and what we're asking for each road. So we, I, I can photocopy for you know, Yeah. after the meeting. Okay. And part of the paving has your cemetery on there, and they knew about it, what you're, what you're doing with it. So that's just the number for now. It's, like your number that you got from them. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be probably 25000 less. So. Uh -huh. so the total amount that we're asking for, we estimate to be? Around 130. That's chip seal and everything. Chip seal, bulb seal, probably 130. That's, right. that's, right. that's what they guessed on my provisions. Did you see that? Yeah. Go ahead. Right. We'll Good it. idea. We'll keep it right there. Good guess. Who so winging it? So that's, the, that's the skinny old man. Do we need a motion on this? Uh, it's already done. Although, let, let's be official again. Is there a motion to uh, enter into the county uh, collective bid project for uh, 2022 for repair and maintenance, overlay, chip seal, fog, fog seal coatings for township roads as specified by road superintendent? No, road administrator at Broken Hour. I'll move that we do with such. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? We're done. Here we go, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Jared? Yes. 
Don't let me forget to write a set of minutes for our road tour meeting. I forgot. All right. Um, while we're on the road department, do you guys want to go ahead and sign this contract of our road and snow removal or the road there with the You put that out, right? And yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just need your signatures and then I'll make a copy of that. And as long as you. This is the contract for the Clifton. Yeah. We've done that when Alex was here. We're going to save 58 cents and a note. I like to do it. Oh, you already did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. I'll have that bill for the consultants to you also. Say thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. She thanks you. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Yeah. How much wink is as good as the How much do we uh course. roughly what do we bill uh and this contract is fifty dollars an hour for Anything we do, whether it's patching, whether it's uh, plowing snow, what does it seem to be each year? A couple of grand. Just a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, three thousand, two hundred, five hundred, three thousand. Just depends on how. Snow is all depends on what the winter's like, right. and and I think the number on the snow is also a little more than fifty an hour. Could salt charge and then labor is fifty an hour. So. It works out. It's about 3500 a year, I think. And yeah. most of those streets are actually in Clark County, aren't they? Just, well, in northern Clark. half and half. But still, it's like the limit. I mean, we, we oh, do. I know. I'm just, I, I think it's an interesting hybrid arrangement. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing a little wedging over here this year on some of the streets, too. Bad spots. Like we were supposed to do it last year, but things got on. So this year, I've already talked to Alex about that one. Oh, they got all that stimulus money burning a hole in their pocket. It was left over from last year. They didn't spend some money, so mm -hmm. he said, "Yeah, we just we got it. We just save it for this year." Well, I will say I think our roads are in better shape. Or let put it this way, the worst township roads are much better than the worst Yellow Spring streets. <laughs> We've got a bad, bad spring right now in Yellow Springs. Oh, so I, that was uh, uh, Mr. Oliver, <laughs> not Chairman Neutral. We'll have some more potholes show up in the next couple of weeks. So they did show up regularly. We got the big ones from the end of the day, but some of the thin ones were they're too thin to put in when it's wet. So we're on top of it. Did you actually do any? Yes, we did. We went out and scooped the water out of the, the ones where they're actual holes. We just scooped it, put it in there, and prep it until we go back around. Right we should all have a crater to drive into. Yeah. And then, uh, other than waiting for snow and ice, that's still. Okay. Don't, don't cross your fingers too much. I'm not. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Does it look Sure. Next week, sometime next week, I'm going to clean a small ditch out for that council. They all the ask if I would be doing it for that city. Okay. We'll together. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else for the road, Don? Nope. Mm -hmm. Anything? Nope. Now that you the road. I've been down every road. I will say down that. the road. You, did, you guys didn't know, but I got pretty queasy on that trip. What? <laughs> I managed not to, um, but have you been on the road tour? You were driven professionally. I get motion sickness, but it was it was fun. And I I wrote down your your um, pathway, so now it's I'm gonna steal it. Uh, perhaps next year you could. No, no. Come in. What did you guys drive? Uh, one of my. Oh, when you the front seat. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah, I even put you in the front seat. So I know. You no, I'm, all I'm, over I'm fine. I was fine. Right. I didn't know I brought it up. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was just proud of myself for not uh, for making it. Well, congratulations. It was out. Uh, Had I known, we could have stopped and got some water mm -hmm. and got some fresh air. And no, I was good. We walked through the South Glen for a while. Okay.
Shall we move to the uh, fiscal officer's report for the evening? Sure. Okay. Well, um, as you can see, we're still amending temporary appropriations. So it's an ongoing process. I think we're still waiting for the party needs a township. Therefore, the trustees authorized amendments to the following appropriations increased medical hospitalization in the general fund by $3,600. Contracted services by 800, the phone by 75, and other by $100. And that was a uh, zone. And then we, it was a piece of advertisement. Anyway, gas tax by increased electricity by 500, road bridge by $20, and the phone, I'm sorry, the phone was increased by $20. And fire levy and repairs and maintenance increased by 175. Natural gas was increased by 500. Contract services increased by $280. The EMS billing, <clears throat> Social Security was increased by $190. Medicare was increased by $90. And operating supplies was increased by $4,000. These all were basically done just to pay today's bills. Because um, I'm hoping we can move to permanent appropriations sooner than later so they don't have to. Mm -hmm. Keep you know tweeting by twenty dollars here and so forth. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. So yeah, the Miami Township Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Is there a motion? This resolution? Yes, I move. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Major? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, let's uh, talk about permanent appropriations. Is anyone have any uh, problems with the with the draft appropriate permanent appropriations that were uh, sent out to us a week or so ago? Um, I have questions, but I don't think this is like I, I marked like eighteen different questions that I have, and I don't th think this is the appropriate forum for that. Well, well let me just say, um, just to in case I'm not sure what your questions are, but. Um, even though it would, they'll become permanent appropriations, they're still, um, you can still amend them. Right. We, as, move as we, we move money all the time. As we will know. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, you know, things change. You get an unexpected bill, whatever. You know, this is, it's right, not like. say you want it approved tonight? No. Okay. Not if you have questions. Um, However, I. But I would like to, like I said, yeah. I stop commend you business. for. Uh, identifying that this is probably not the, the right. venue to go over. Well, I, I had mentioned once if we, if, if we have a, like, a meeting, like a special meeting you just had, or it could be just a meeting with Chris, but it might not be legal for me to just meet with you. I, about I'd like sure to have it, because yeah, okay. there's no decisions made. Right, mm -hmm. cool. I'd like to... Uh, have a meeting where we look ahead, you know, primarily I'm thinking of the, the budget situation with the fire and rescue, but you know, where are we going in the next year, two years, and we mm -hmm. talked about the, the uh, possible need for a, a levy. We uh, definitely need that meeting. There's no question whatsoever, and I think everybody agrees, however, that really doesn't have to do with the permanent appropriations for this year, right this minute, as it were. It does not have, right, it doesn't have to block our moving ahead with that. But So we don't really need a meeting, a joint meeting, for your question and for her question. I mean, she needs a, a singular meeting, one-on-one -on -one with, with somebody. You need an open meeting or special meeting or, or something for, for that discussion. Do you agree or, or not? Because uh, I, I, yeah, I guess what I'm talking about is a narrower, mm -hmm. both narrower but also bigger okay. picture, just for fire and rescue. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll bring that up later. OK, great. So we'll get you. Taken care of hopefully between now and the next meeting. Yeah, like what if we meet this weekend and then I probably get probably ready to approve this by next okay. meeting. That sounds fine. 
by the first meeting in March. So what, what month is this? Yeah. So we have, to, we have to do the uh, permanent appropriations by the end of March, right? Yeah. So if we did it the first meeting in March, that would be fine. That would be fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Did you have any questions regarding the, the, uh, the draft permanent appropriations? Questions, concerns? Uh, frankly, I have not studied it. Okay. Well, we have another session. I had one in the fire fund. It seemed like the OPF, whatever, yeah, contributions, uh, uh, you were estimating them to be over twice as much as last year. Last year, 60 plus, and you're putting in like 128. Well, yeah, well, what I did was um, if, I, if you add up the um, what the uh, uh, appropriation was for the salaries yeah. for the year, uh -huh. and um, they pay uh, point, they pay uh, 12%, 12 and a quarter percent out of their paycheck, and then we pay 24% of those salaries we pay uh -huh. into the contribution. So that's the math I use. Okay, well, but why it, would this year, excuse me, this past year have been half that amount? Well, I, maybe I miscalculated, but if you look at the appropriated amounts that I put for salaries, that's the numbers I use. So maybe I over, maybe I once again figured way too much money for salaries than what we actually need. It does Could you take a look at that? Yeah. Okay. The, the, the OPF is the pension fund. Mm -hmm. But it, it does increase with salaries. Absolutely. So. But not double. Yeah, yeah, because it's because we pay a percentage. It's that, you know, whatever. Same, you know, reverse. Other than that, I, I commend you. I think I'm doing an excellent job. Oh, um, pretty, pretty okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll check it out. So, let's <laughs> let me clarify. We pay 24 percent of fire and rescue salary into. Open retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they pay 12. Mm -hmm. So there's a total of 36. That's very impressive. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. well, that's why they retire after 20 years. Right. That was, that was well, it's a, potentially, potentially it's a very, very rough mm -hmm. job. It certainly yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Continued trauma. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else for the fiscal officer? Um, oh uh, well, I, I we didn't really have a meeting. I don't think since we we must have. But this invoice for Otarma for our property and you know, for our, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pay this. I guess unless you all have a want to talk about it at all. Karen was not familiar with this, but I I don't. I reviewed it. Did you take it. a look at it? Did you? It's not very professional. Did you take a look at it? It's gone up just a tinge, I think. Who are you speaking with? All y'all. I all looked at it. I don't think it's gone up because if we had a flat amount that we were supposed to be. I didn't think we wanted to add the rider for the additional million dollars. I thought we were in right. pretty good shape. I asked if you saw the email. I asked Wendy French if it would save us any money to change our deductibles from right. 500 to 1,000. And she said basically no. Right. So, so I said, like, well, never mind. Yeah. yeah. Said, no. Um and um Other than yeah. that, what you got? Well we did um Colin and I got together and we both applied for grants through our time and got over five hundred dollars for the road department, a thousand for the fire department. Excellent. Yeah, so that's good. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm glad we're using that uh, capability that we yeah. have yeah. have through them. Dan said he could buy a couple pair of steel boots, steel toe boots for the, he himself and and his comrade for five hundred bucks. That reminds me. Uh oh. Are you? Are we finished? Sure. Any other questions for the officer? No, Marilyn. Anything for the officer? For the what? Fiscal officer. Fiscal officer. No. Oh, Tom is that that property? Yeah, insurance. Yeah, property casualty, auto. That's a kind of uncomfortable. Um, did you see Katie Rose's? Oh, yes. That's it. Uh, we could. Did you come in? Yeah. No, I have an option. Fifty grand. Ooh. Hey, what? Yeah. Ooh is right. What happened? Um, 
the, the new utility truck that we're buying for oh. the road department, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's due to be delivered next month uh, at a cost of $47,000. Uh, that's for the cabin chassis only. Uh, and then we have to take it to a supplier and, and have the dump truck put on it, the, the hydraulics for the snow plow, and whatever else. And that whatever else is an, an additional $50,000. They can't use the, the old plow because the framework's different. So. The old spreader and spinner, yes. Great. But not the plow. So that makes that truck. Hair's breadth away from hundred thousand dollars. Last time we were probably looking at eighty five. Uh, yeah, so that about eighty five, one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. You could have spent on your salary. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could patch it up, drop it, and lose it a lot longer if we want to. Well, <laughs> yeah, but we we we've got a cabin chassis that we'd have to store for a while. Uh, I don't. I mean, if you want another book from someone else, we could. I'm sure that's what it is in the market today. Uh, I, I figured it'd be a little higher. I, mean, I thought I was thinking like I didn't add anything, eliminated a couple things, changed the light bulb with the work lights, which we could use some work lights that might be a call out to it. I think you can like make a flood light, and it helps when you're plowing uh -huh. the eternal and see farther in. It's, yeah. it's snowboarding. Yeah, probably, yeah. In the county, everybody I talked to said if you can go to the light on top. So it's incorporating the light bar, so the light bar is probably more. Yeah. But beneficial for safety. Uh, well, absolutely. You, you need decent tires on it? Well, we you can do a thumb on it, you know. Just, you didn't have any. I got the most, well, better off. To respect that, did you tell me one of the most aggressive they have? Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever you, they went off our last one would be the same, yeah. which it had with more aggressive tire. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. And I think I eliminated the simulators on the rims and stuff, the chrome. Yeah. I mean, it protect the lug nuts, but I can spray them with free and all that helps too. So. Yeah. That saved us $500 right there. I didn't have any idea. He didn't give me any control part of what it would be. I get this deja vu. We're back to where we were sitting here, lining out fifty and a hundred dollars on the firehouse, trying to save enough money to make it affordable to build. True. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Sorry, I didn't remember it. Say that. Uh, zoning inspectors report, no zoning inspectors report, other than I did want to report that on April 20th, um, well, two things, I guess. I passed out to both of you, whether I have it with me, which I yeah, have afraid, a flyer about a planning seminar that's being, yeah, there it is, a planning seminar yeah, so. that's mm -hmm. being put together uh, through RPCC, and I will guarantee you double your money back for the cost of this that uh, it would be very beneficial if you had the opportunity to either you can you can do these uh, sessions you, you don't have to do them all you can just pick the ones you think are best for you or they're all available uh, and they begin uh, the uh, when did they begin in March? Are yeah. they live or are they streaming? Uh, they are live. Uh, unfortunately, for those who like streaming, the operation that's putting this together charges an arm and a leg to, to have a stream. This, they're getting, I think, for either nothing or very little. So. I, What's the April 20th date? So well, March. Okay, let me say the first one is March 9th, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Okay. Located at the Parks and Trail Conference Room. Evening. Pardon? Evening, good. Yeah. Yeah, they're all exactly the same. 
And now on the 20th of April, they will be, that session will be held here because they're moving around the, the county to give people so they don't have to go far or uh, don't have it right next door all the time. So look at that, uh, see whether you'd like to do it. Uh, sign up, there's a little form in the back. Okay. So April 20th, you'll be responsible for opening and shutting the doors? Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Um, I also am going to send this to all of our zoning commission members and encourage them to, to use, the, use the information. It's, so I think it would be beneficial. That's specifically for townships. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. well, I saw it on my desk, but I did not study it. Safe. Okay. Uh, if, if we could drop back just a little bit. I'm sorry, Margaret, did, did you ever look at that center point sales tax question that I had a couple weeks ago? Uh, our gas, on our gas bill, we get like a $40, $45 sales tax addition. You didn't? No, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Okay, we get a bill every month for our gas usage, our natural gas. Oh, our natural gas usage, whatever. Yeah. That's from Center Point. No, yeah. And on the bill, at least the, the most recent one that, that, that I have looked at, there was a 40, it's probably based on what we use, obviously, a $45 sales tax. I know that that's going to be a hassle, but we have authority over them. Yeah, I'll check that out. Sorry for the. Missed that. Yep. Huh. All this time. Is this part of now, wasn't it? Or was it now? Was it? Yeah. Now it's some point. Okay. Um, no, it was Vectrum. Oh, Vectrum, right. Excuse me. Okay, standing committee reports for the evening. MBRPC Executive Committee Board of Directors did not meet due to the weather last, uh, last month. County Regional Planning Coordinating Commission. We met. Uh, we met last night. Went over. Hey. What? We went over this planning. We went over the county broadband, which I want to talk about in newer old business. Uh, went over one uh, zoning uh, change for Clifton Village. Uh, somebody wanted to put a four acres of storage facilities, basically, I mean, it was still in the township, but it was on the village line, uh, right between 72 and 42, uh, in an area that was designated for residential and was in the comprehensive plan, not, not the villages, they don't have one, but the county's comprehensive plan for being light residential and so forth. Bunch of different re reasons. The board just uh, decided to recommend re uh, rejecting, opposing the, uh, the change in zoning. So it's 72 and 42. Yeah, um, so that's not Clifton. That's this no, I'm sorry, Cedarville. Uh, if I yeah, said Clifton, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so now we're. Clifton Union Cemetery, any meetings? We did not meet Clifton Union Cemetery. Um, Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation did meet and we're meeting again next week. Uh, I would like to invite our other representative, Corey Van Osdell, to either, well, I invite her to come to a, a meeting, either our next one or later in March, depending on her availability. Is she president she is or now, she chair? She is now president, uh, president. Really? of YSDC. Mm -hmm. uh, the YSCDC, but usually we just say YSDC. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's all I need to say about them. Okay. Uh, Grinnell Mill, the, if I didn't say it, the, the roof is done and the insurance company is happy and so I'm done with that. We are uh, 
uh, right now drafting through the uh, uh, through the generous auspices of David Newhart, uh, drafting a new lease between the, between the township and Glen Helen for the uh, long-term operation and maintenance of the mill. Uh, when that draft gets finished, I'll circulate a copy to everyone for their review and input. Does that mean that Glen Helen's going to be operating it then? Mm -hmm. And Marilyn? No, I have no report. You have no report? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any new business this evening? What was I? Mm -hmm. Pardon me? There was, there was a topic I brought up when it wasn't the Development Corporation. That's the other thing. Oh, um, I wanted to bring up. Hosting, co-hosting the uh, Green County Township Association. It was one point they asked if it was suggested that Xenia Township, Cedarville Township, and Miami Township might like to co-host at the new Miami Township Firehouse, uh, and they actually mentioned March. And I did not reply, so we're not on for March. Uh, I don't think it's practical to have it here unless we have it in a bay in the garage. We don't have space for 50 or 100 people to eat. Uh, you've, been to the, you've been to the meetings a lot more than I have. But if you had 50 or 100, you're, in a, you're at the engineer's dinner. Oh, okay. But how many people come to these? So I, I 25 to 30 tops. Okay, well this room allows 34, and we've been saying we don't want food. That's the room. On this carpet. Uh -huh. And then also the parking is yeah. marginal. Uh, we can do it. Mm -hmm. And I would very much like to do something in collaboration with Cedarville and Xenia Townships as we've been, I've been talking with them a lot around the Kingwood uh, solar proposal. Uh, we've met in the bays of township fire departments for years. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Okay. Uh, it's just a matter of schlepping these tables down the down the hall chair well i don't know why march was in my mind because that's the engineer's dinner right and marilyn have you been to any of these township associations i have not well tables. i highly recommend the engineer's dinner partly because the engineer actually reports on something a lot of these are kind of fluffy Hey, no, no one <laughs> sold. But so will, they aren't just meetings; they're dinners. Free, free dinner. It's a lot of socializing on the side. Uh, Schmoozing. And there's a program. Okay. And sometimes the programs are milk toast. But so if we hosted it, would we come up with a program along with our no. uh -huh. okay. Well, the program might be a. Or have Jason Funderburg talk about six different firehouses we can build or something. I'm actually kind of serious about that. Uh, would we like to host, we'd have other townships helping us at some level. But there'd be an expense of providing the dinner. Uh, maybe the association would help pay for that. Generally, they don't have that kind of money. Generally, we, we cover the cost of these dinners. Okay. So you talk about do it in conjunction with Cedarville and Xenia, or just Cedarville? Mm -hmm. Cedarville, Xenia. I thought you originally thought it was going to be a summer or early fall potential meeting. Okay. I, I don't. When you originally asked about it. 
No? I don't remember asking you about it. I just remember getting an email and not responding. Yeah, I remember getting an email and they were reaching out for people to volunteer, not people, yeah. but well, just to volunteer. Xenia and Cedarville said, great idea <laughs> at our place. Mm -hmm. That is a great idea. Well, then I'll pursue it. Okay. Um, rather open-ended at the moment. Keep in mind, if you're going to go to the engineer's dinner, it's, a, it's, a, it's an RSVP uh, for sure, because she's short on space, because it's going to be held in the, actually in the engineer's building in their conference room, which is nowhere near the size of the uh, fairgrounds mm -hmm. ballroom or whatever you call it thing. I have no idea why she's doing it there. Uh, maybe she doesn't think she's going to get, I think it's March 8th, if there's somewhere an invitation that was in the okay. correspondence. <coughs> okay. Well, as long as I'm talking, can I bring up a report on Kingwood? Sure. sure. Roll right into it. Uh, the Kingwood solar proposal is going to the Power Siding Board Next week, the formal hearing will begin. It may go for a few days, so I may be Zooming for a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I will be talking all that time, but I'll be watching and listening. Uh, and the written testimony is due Monday. And that's, that's what I'm saying for Miami Township in opposition to the uh, proposal is not a lot of detail. It's you know, based on our existing planning and uh, the public statements made already on record uh, at the different uh, public hearings. Um, but we, uh, I've mentioned, uh, we, I recruited Eric Sauer from the Five River Metro Parks. Uh, he's their, I don't know his official title, but basically land manager for uh, like 30,000 acres or something. Uh, he's talking about uh, likely impacts on, on land, on the soil, on drainage, uh, and He's, we are not paying him for that, uh, but you may recall there's been a lot of Lee Slum's time has been working with Eric, and we've asked the Xenia Township and Cedarville Township if they could uh, help pay for Lee Slum's mm -hmm. time with Eric Sauer. Uh, Have you heard from either of them? About that? Only that they're talking about it. Uh, I've not heard yes or no. Mm -hmm. um, so the main thing is it's about to happen. Oh, and mm -hmm. parallel to that, uh, Vesper, the owners of the Kingwood proposal, uh, requested a 30 day delay, mm -hmm. which would be the second postponement and the three townships united in saying we don't see any point in that it's just going to cost us more money to wait mm -hmm. and the request for a postponement was rejected last week mm -hmm. so we're going ahead and so from my point of view this is a big deal mm -hmm. next week is going to be good. it's actually a week after but mm -hmm. it, it's going to be two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. It's Tuesday the 8th, right? Is that what you said? Well, it, I think March 8th is the first day. Oh, okay. So the actual yeah. hearing. Monday is the deadline for mm -hmm. my written uh, testimony. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I think we prepared ourselves as uh, as three townships as best as possible. So I hope okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. 
he's done. <laughs> Marilyn, do you have anything? No. Okay. Um, I had just a couple of things before we, yeah, before we get into executive session. It's, uh, we had a presentation, I was at a RPCC meeting last night, a presentation by Eric. Um, this old business is still there. <laughs> This could be that. Well, the Eric thing, might as well call it new business. All right, because my second one is probably new business. And the, yeah, the this is, we're still in new business. Yeah. Okay. Eric, our county Eric. development officer. Right. And he went over some of the, the highlights of the broadband, and I'm not going to go too far in depth with it. Um, we did have a nice handout from him, Eric Henry is right in front of me, uh, about how it is, was put together and is going to be put together and implemented. And so if you're interested, if you haven't read that, that pen out yet, uh, do so. It's on the um, table. Yeah. Uh, basically, they're going to serve, uh, uh, when this is all done, they're going to serve 9,600 residences of Greene County, not people, but residences, will be wired uh, with fiber, uh, with fiber optics. Uh, th that doesn't mean they have to use it. All it means is it will be available to those people if they so choose. Uh, it talks about the, the price of them. Uh, I think the lowest tier is $42 a month for 200 megabytes of download service, and when you sign up initially or something, you get an upgrade for free, so you get 400 for the price of 200. So you can play all the killing games you want, because that's, that's a lot of broadband. Uh, it's gonna make some kids happy out there in Ross Township and uh, Jefferson Township. <laughs> that's a lot of broadband, I don't know, megabytes. That's a lot of megabytes. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's being done by Cincinnati Bell, who was the winning uh, uh, winning bidder. Uh, Cincinnati Bell. Okay, the the county will have to commit just under ten thousand dollars to the program. Local jurisdictions are being asked to commit what they feel they can. There was talk about a specific number that they were going to require, um, but for some reason they felt they didn't want to go that direction. So uh, it, again, if you read the email that he sent out recently, on this one, uh, he said they're asking for a commitment of what you feel that you can, you know, what you feel is appropriate, what you feel that you can afford, either from your ARPA funds, uh, which obviously we are justified in using, or from other sources, as we see fit. Um, so this is going to be a, go ahead, I'm sorry. It's going to be a. The county needs to give 10,000, that seems like such a small oh, number. 10 million. 10 million, you said 10,000, okay. okay I'm sorry. The county, yeah, county needs <laughs> 10, 10 million. Yeah, the county needs 10 million. Local jurisdictions, not really sure what that's going to, uh, uh, going to be. And Cincinnati Bell, uh, uh, who's going to own the whole thing. They don't, the, the county is not going to, the, the township, the county, they're not going to own any of this. This is like AT&T. You don't own AT&T, they just come and they are spectrum or whatever. They're just going to provide this, they're going to put this, the, the system in place, they're going to provide the service, they're going to bill you for it, et cetera, et cetera. They are committed to putting over $55 million of their own funds. Because they're going to have customers. Right, sure. Okay. So you got 55 million from them and 10 million from the county and whatever the local jurisdictions put in. This is a pretty good sized project. Will it serve all of our remaining township people? Yep. That's amazing. Yep. And yeah, do, do we do they know that yet? Well, probably not quite yet, but they're going to as this goes on. It's going to take a while. This is not yeah. going to be till the the first the. First person who, who might be able to log on to the system won't be till early 23. 
and that will be right at the hub. It's somewhere outside of Zinu where they build this thing okay. to begin with. Uh, and then it's going to be 23, 24 before they okay. expect to have this uh, in, in place. Okay. Um, in addition, which I didn't know, it wasn't in the original. It wasn't in the original package, but I don't know how this is going to work. But apparently, Cincinnati Bell either is going to or has to, in order to make the money or something, they're going to do. They're going to bring fiber optics to all the villages and cities too. So they're going to provide 30,000, uh, that can't be seen, there's more than 30,000. They're going to provide 30,000 additional hookups for nothing. Yeah, I interpreted that as people who already have access, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily fiber, but mm -hmm. internet access. Mm -hmm. and first of all, there are almost 10,000 that have nothing. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're guaranteed. Yes. And they the, the estimate 30,000 who this may well be an upgrade in service if they choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's an additional benefit. Um, I don't know. That does not include the Village of Yellow Springs, of course, because Village has their own plan of providing broadband uh, on a competitive basis, uh, price and, and bandwidth, as I've seen the numbers from, from both. So uh, you know, they, may, they may, I don't know, they may compete as things go down. Eric was kind of hinting that there are a bunch of other businesses companies, whatever, that are out in the township, out in the county, laying broadband uh, fiber optics, either underground or on poles, in, in, in different areas, trying to get a, a head start on the provision of fiber optics to make money for themselves. He thought there was upwards of 10 different companies that are starting to do that now. So this is fiber optic, not any, I mean, not, not like the guy out of Clifton. No, 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 this is actual fiber optics. Uh, I don't know if they're making those fiber optic cables awful cheap now or not, but it used to be. I thought it was horrendously expensive, and, and the hookups were almost impossible to, you know, to splice these things together. So, I, well, it must have gotten easier. Anyway, that that's what's going on with that. Additionally, um, Commissioner Gould talked about as we know, there's been this opioid settlement in the state of Ohio. Well, the settlement distribution of funds is about to begin. About is a relative term, it may be six months to a year, but the planning is, start, is, is being put in place. For example, the beginning, uh, the, the, the state has been divided into some 400 districts. We're in District 14 with seven other counties. And our, our district will then uh, send a representative, we'll pick a representative and send it to the state to be on the committee of distribution. Uh, you know, I don't know what they'll have to do. Did you say the opioid settlement? Opioid settlement, yeah. And so then eventually we will receive some, <coughs> some portion of that large settlement that's going to be cut in a, a zillion, <laughs> zillion little pieces of the pie. But it is something that's moving along, and uh, we are hopeful. Uh, those are the only two things I had for, for new business or old business. Is there any other thing to come before the board? No? Uh, nope. Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to move into executive session for the purposes of uh, uh, hiring personnel. I, I so move. I second. Moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We'll do that in about 
625. Uh, so we had done to clarify this, will, there'll be no action out of this? There will be no action. This is the beginning discussion, so we're not going to come back to public we, session. We will come to just adjourn. Right, exactly. So if, if you choose not to stay, either Dan or Margaret, that's up to you. Um, we don't stay though. No, so are there going to be checks for me to sign tomorrow morning? Or what? There's, a, there's a boatload in the safe now, in the oh, unsafe okay. safe. <laughs> At the reason. Would you turn the camera off for us, please? <laughs> Before you get in the boat. <laughs> <laughs>